Gruß Gott Prelings. Once again, I did not get a notification on my phone that Rehoboth has just gone live. Some of you did, I hope, because I see some of you out there. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome to Thursday of Holy Week. Today is Thursday and it is April the 14th. It's still 2022. And I'm wearing red today. And I'm not wearing red because it's a saint day. I'm wearing red because it's the color of the day for Maundy Thursday, which is what today is. Maundy Thursday. Not Monday Thursday like I thought when I was growing up. Maundy. That word comes from what happened on this night particularly the gospel or yes the gospel reading we have in church from John where Jesus washes people's feet his disciples feet and then says I give you a new commandment love one another as I have loved you and the word for commandment in Latin is mandatum, mandate. That's where we get our English word mandate, commandment. And that's how this came to be Maundy Thursday, the Thursday of the mandate, of the new commandment. So what are we doing today? I don't know. It's Thursday of Holy Week. I'm lucky I remembered that there was matins this morning. We're going to pray a psalm, 48, I think, Psalm 48. We're going to hear from Mark, chapter 14. We are not singing a hymn today. Instead of singing a hymn today, we are going to listen to Mozart, specifically Mozart Ave Verum Corpus, which he wrote in honor of Christ being truly present in Holy Communion. That's what Ave Verum Corpus means. Hail, or, you know, hello, or hi, or greetings. True body. I'll tell you more about that when we get to that part. So that's what we're doing this morning. And of course, I have my red mug, because red is the color of the day. Red. All right. Mm, that's good. I have snickerdoodle coffee. It's really good. All right. Praying mountains. I'll be right back. We shall pray. We are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O come, let us worship Him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful note to the rock of our salvation. 
let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hands. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O oh, come, let us worship Him. Psalm 48 Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. In the city of our God is his holy hill. Beautiful and lofty, the joy of all the earth is the hill of Zion, the very center of the world, and the city of the great king. God is in her citadels. He is known to be her sure refuge. Behold, the kings of the earth assembled and marched forward together. They looked and were astounded. They retreated and fled in terror. Trembling seized them there. They writhed like a woman in childbirth, like ships of the sea when the east wind shatters them. As we have heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God. God has established her forever. We have waited in silence on your loving kindness, O God, in the midst of your temple. Your praise, like your name, O God, reaches to the world's end. Your right hand is full of justice. Let Mount Zion be glad, and the cities of Judah rejoice because of your judgments. Make the circuit of Zion Walk round about her, count the number of her towers. Consider well her bulwarks, examine her strongholds, that you may tell those who come after, this God is our God forever and ever. He shall be our guide forevermore. Let us pray. Father, the body of your risen Son is the temple not made by human hands and the bulwark of the new Jerusalem. Make this holy city, built of living stones, so shine with spiritual radiance that it may show your greatness in the sight of all nations. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'm going to read to you in English what Ave Verum Corpus says. Greetings, true body, born of the Virgin Mary, who truly suffered, sacrificed on the cross for humanity, <clears throat> whose pierced side overflowed with water and blood, 
be for us a foretaste at, of the time of death. And we say that, don't we, in our communion liturgy, a foretaste of the feast to come. Ave verum corpus. Let us pray. Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you anointed your only begotten Son, Messiah and Lord of creation. You have given us a share in his consecration to priestly service in your church. Help us to be faithful witnesses in the world to the salvation Christ won for all people. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where will you go? Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the householder, The teacher says, where is my guest room, where I am to eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. There, prepare for us. 
And the disciples set out and went to the city and found it as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they were at table eating, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. And they began to be sorrowful, and to say to him one after another, Is it I? He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. And as they were eating, he took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I shall not drink of the fruit of the vine again until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house, and the place where your glory dwells. I don't even know where to begin. I could talk for hours about Monday Thursday, but nobody wants that. We have the story in Mark of that evening. I hope you heard that there weren't just 13 people there. I know every time we see pictures of the Last Supper, there's Jesus and the Twelve, and that's all. There were a lot of people there. There were a lot of people there. Because I think, I'm pretty sure, that this upper room is the same upper room where everybody was praying between Jesus' ascension and Pentecost, and there were 120 plus people in the room then. And Jesus is sending his disciples two of his disciples ahead to go make preparations who aren't part of the twelve. Uh, did you hear that? Because Jesus, uh, or Jesus, Mark says that they, he sent those two and they made preparations for the Passover and later that evening Jesus arrived with the twelve. And when Jesus says, one of you will betray me, and everybody's saying, is it me? Is it me? Is it me? Well, is it I, according to Mark? But, and Jesus' answer is, it's one of the twelve. There are a lot of people in that room, not just 13 of them. But, what, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. Judas, I wanted to talk about Judas for a minute. And then I wanted to talk about other things. You may have heard me say this before about Judas and Jesus saying one of the twelve is going to betray me and it would be better for him if he had never been born. Woe to him. It would have been better for him if he had never been born. 
And I don't think Jesus said it like I just said it. I just said it so that it sounded like Jesus was condemning Judas to eternal hellfire and damnation. I don't think Jesus said it that way at all. I think he said it with a great compassion and love because he knew what was going to happen. He knew that Judas was going to be so overwhelmed by guilt and shame that he could not bear it to the point that he committed suicide. I think that is what Jesus is talking about. And he has compassion on Judas, as do I. Because remember, Judas is not the only one who betrayed Jesus that night. Yeah, he, he, he betrayed Jesus into the hands of those who came to arrest him. But Peter also betrayed Jesus. And everybody else for that matter, but Peter was pretty blatant about it saying out loud to people, I have no idea who he is. I never saw him before in my life. No, I'm not his follower. Also a betrayal. Peter was also overcome with shame and guilt, if you recall. The difference between Judas and Peter, which is a lesson for all of us, is that Peter was still able to trust that there would be forgiveness for him. So he wasn't overwhelmed to the point that he had to end his life just to escape his feelings or to somehow think that that was a repayment for the horrible thing he just done. I don't know what was in Judas's mind when he killed himself. But it wasn't good, which is why Jesus says, I feel sorry. Whoa. It would be better if he hadn't been born. But somebody had to do that, right? We forget that part. Somebody had to betray Jesus because nobody in the army that came to arrest him knew what which one was Jesus. And these other things are happening that night. These two things that we say in our words of institution. I like to point, because I always want to stop in the words of institution and say, did you hear that? So we, we start the words of institution in our Holy Communion service with these words. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And I always wanted to point out, I want to point out, stop everything and say, did you hear that? Our Lord Jesus Christ gave us the sacrament of his body and blood on the night that he was betrayed. That night. Not some night where everything was hunky-dory and everybody was feeling holy and sanctified. Well, maybe they were because it was Passover, but that's not what was going on. There was a lot of turmoil in the spiritual world that night. Jesus was being betrayed and then he was going to be arrested. And in between that, he himself was going to be in great anguish in the Garden of Gethsemane, remember? Praying so fiercely that he's sweating blood. Begging his father. Is there another way? I'll do this, but if there is another way, because he knows what's coming. And it's absolutely horrendous. And I'm not even sure for Jesus the worst part was the physical part. But that spiritual battle with Satan and sin. So on that night, when all of that is happening in 
in Jesus' mind and soul, that night, right then, he gives us the sacrament of his body and his blood. That night. And then later, Jesus says, <clears throat> with the cup, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Except I think he said it like this. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Because the, the I don't want to call it old, because it's still in effect. <clears throat> the covenant God made with Israel. That covenant. You can read about it in Genesis. Covenant that God made with Israel. Abraham on behalf of the entire nation of Israel for all time. Covenants are ratified in blood. And in that story, if you'll remember, Yahweh cut animals in half and walked between them. That's how you made a covenant. You cut animals in half and walked between them. The symbolism there being, if I break this covenant, this is what this is the consequence. I will be cut in half, and I will spill my blood. And it's, and it's also, the day of, of the <clears throat> unleavened bread, the feast of unleavened bread, when people are sacrificing, the lambs in the temple. For Passover, their Passover lambs are being slaughtered. And there's blood everywhere. It's part of the covenant. When you have burnt offerings at the temple, you have to kill the animal. There's blood for the covenant. There's always blood with the covenant. And Jesus is saying now, here's a new covenant and now it's my blood, not the blood of, of animals. This covenant is being ratified with my blood. God's blood is ratifying this covenant. I always want to stop in communion and say that. I don't know. I just say it to pe other people along the way and hope that it gets into some people's ears. <clears throat> Maybe I'll preach it someday. And then the part, like I just talked about, Jesus going to Gethsemane, we never read that in church. We never have that lesson in church. I don't know how we even know about it. Because that lesson does not come up in our lectionary. I don't know why. We should just keep reading here. What happened after after the Last Supper? After that Passover meal when Jesus and the disciples went out and they were singing their psalms. That's how you end your Passover meal. You sing psalms. And they were out and they ended up in the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus took Peter, James, and John again. Peter, James, and John, his three best buds, and asked them to come pray with him, and they couldn't do it. Every time he came to check on them, they were sleeping, remember? That happened this night. And the third time Jesus came to check on them and they were sleeping, Jesus said, well, it doesn't matter anymore because now they're here to arrest me, which they did. Judas came and kissed him so they'd know which one was Jesus. And they arrested him and carted him all over the place for the rest of the night. Till tomorrow when he would, they would take him to Pilate. And remember, he starts all of this by washing his disciples' feet. 
and saying to them, If I, your Lord and Master, am washing your feet, how should you be caring for each other? That's the whole point of what he's doing. He's reconciling us to God so that we can properly and lovingly and unhinderingly with everything in us care for one another. All of that, all of that happening this evening, the evening of Monday, Thursday. Lots to ponder today. I'm going to pray the Benedictus, and I hope you join me. as 
Bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Prayerlings. Oh, sorry, I have a tickle in my throat. So this is the last day for purple. It'll be a different color today, and it'll be a different color for Sunday. I'm not saying what. You'll have to see for yourself. Tomorrow there won't be any color in it. Tomorrow on Saturday because... Those days are too somber to play with my hair. But tonight and Sunday, no. All right, dear ones, go to church tonight somewhere. If you go to House of Prayer or Rehoboth, you can um, experience the joy of young people having their first communion. Those are both live streamed, too. House of Prayer at 7 we're hoping that 7.30, I'm sure that you Redeemerites are going to be at Redeemer this evening. Um, yeah, find a place to worship tonight. And I'll be back tomorrow, good Friday morning. And we will pray together again. Hope you have a lovely day and you think about today all the things that Jesus is doing these next few days doing for you doing for you and remember that I love you and when you think of all the things that Jesus is doing for you how can you not know that he loves you a bazillion gazillion quadrillion times more guten tag